Hi, welcome to On Invest Smart. I'm Tai Hui, the Chief Market Strategist for Asia Pacific at JP Morgan Asset Management. And thank you for giving us a few minutes of your time to learn about what on the investors' minds and how that fits in with building the right portfolio. Investors' focus on the U.S. Federal Reserve has shifted from the end of the hiking cycle to when the central bank would start cutting rates and also by how much. For now, the futures market is still looking at a total of 140 basis points in rate cuts over the next one year and then another 65 basis points in 2025, with a 45% chance of the Fed starting to cut in March. Now, we've long argued that a March cut is too aggressive or too early, and we simply don't get data weak enough to justify this move in the next few weeks. But it is worth considering what would prompt the Fed to swing towards a rate cut. So in this episode, I'd like to discuss a few data series that we've looked at and referencing to past rate cut cycles as part of our publications on Investors' Minds. It is available on our Insights app as well as our website. Now, two health warnings before we start. First, every rate cut cycle is unique, so we need to put these data into context. And also, not every data series are equally helpful. We believe it's important to identify those data that investors may think would be relevant, but our research suggests otherwise. Second, this is by no means an exhaustive list and data thresholds are not definitive. The Fed's attitude towards inflation and growth has changed over the years. For example, now they take inflation much more seriously than 10, 15 years ago. And this could shift the relative importance of these numbers and the threshold for the Fed to act. As always, we will summarize the key takeaways and the investment implications at the end. So, what do we look at? First, we looked at ISM Manufacturing Index, real policy rates, unemployment rate, and financial conditions at the time of the first rate cuts over the past seven rate cut cycles since 1989. The first thing to note is that the Fed would be quick in cutting rates if there is a financial crisis or an unexpected event such as the COVID pandemic. Now, these are not in our core scenarios at the moment. The economic data right now suggests the Fed could be cutting rates to prevent excessively tight monetary policy instead of reacting to a crisis. This distinction is really important when we look at the investment implications later on. So which indicators are relevant? Economic growth and prices are perhaps the most important things for the Fed. For economic growth momentum, we've chosen the ISM Manufacturing Index, a monthly survey that's calibrated to reflect growth momentum. Although the level of ISM Manufacturing Index during Fed's first cuts were not significantly weak, averaging only 48.6 over the past cycles, it is likely the magnitude of the drop in the index over time and the associated loss in growth momentum that worries the Fed is perhaps most important. In fact, we found that at the Fed's first cuts, ISM Manufacturing Index was on average 4.2 points lower than the past 12 months average. Were there false positives? Sure. This means the indicator could have foretold rate cuts but the Fed failed to deliver. Between 1989 and 2023, Only in 14 months did we see this ISM Manufacturing Index more than 4.2% below its 12-month average, but the Fed did not do anything. Now, within those 14 months of data, 10 months occurred over the current hiking cycle, when manufacturing PMI dropped from a peak of 60.8 in late 2021 to a bottom of 46.0 in mid-2023. This dramatic decline did not trigger the Fed to cut rates, given high inflation and low jobless rates. Now, the latest December 2023 manufacturing PMI reading is already 0.2% higher than the past 12-month average, meaning manufacturing weakness is likely to bottom out for the time being. Now, as for price levels, given the different interest rates and inflation regime in the past three decades, we've chosen to look at a relative measure, real rates as measured by the difference between nominal Fed funds rates and PCE headlined year-on-year inflation. Apart from the ultra-low rates regime post the global financial crisis, we can observe that the Fed cuts take action when real rates rise to 3 to 4%. Now, this is likely to the point where the Fed deems real interest rates to be too high. The Fed's latest dot plot projects a long-term nominal terminal rates of 2.5% and PCE inflation of 2%, putting effectively the Fed's target real rates for the long term at 0.5% going forward. Now, since the cooling of inflation recently, this measure real rates has been rising to 2.65% as of December 2023, 
nearing the 3 to 4% range when the Fed historically started to cut. So, which indicators are less relevant? Surprisingly, unemployment rate is one of them. Full employment is one of the Fed's policy objectives. Historically, the Fed often cuts before unemployment rates start to rise, with an overall average of around 4.6%. The Fed start cutting rates before unemployment rates start to move substantially, we believe there are two possible reasons. Number one, the lagged effect of job cuts when heading into a slowdown. Number two, unemployment rates often spikes much quicker than coming down, meaning the Fed often needs to be preemptive uh, to avoid the spike in unemployment rate before it's too late. A similar trend can be observed using initial jobless claims or continuing claims, as well as non-farm payroll and employment changes as the Fed often cuts before material deterioration in job data. So right now, while the Fed is indeed waiting for the softening of an unusually hot labor market, it likely will only require preliminary signs of weakening instead of significant deterioration for the Fed to start cutting. Still, other than 2019, unemployment rate was at least 4%, if not substantially higher, when the Fed decided to start cutting rates. We might need to wait for jobless rates to rise a little bit more before the Fed feels the urgency to act, especially when full employment fuels wage growth. As for financial conditions, it might be surprising to observe that five out of seven times, the Fed made its first cut when financial conditions were already starting to loosen. Similar to real policy rates, the tightness in financial conditions is certainly a consideration for the Fed when deciding on much policy. But movements in the financial condition index, here we use the Goldman Sachs measure, is easily influenced by market expectations of Fed's action ahead of time. For example, 10-year US Treasury yields often start to come down before the Fed actually started to cut. So what does that mean for investors? While real policy rates have moved towards a level consistent with the Fed policy loosening, ISM manufacturing index or unemployment rates do not show there's an urgency to cut rates right now. Moreover, the decline in US Treasury yield since the middle of fourth quarter last year has actually helped to ease financial conditions to some extent. The futures market is currently pricing in a pace of rate cuts similar to past recession periods, which is likely not what we're heading into. Either the Fed is cutting rates as a precaution, and the magnitude will be just enough to bring real policy rates back to neutral, or an economic conditions more drastic that requires more aggressive actions. We still think the former is more likely at this point. The good news is, precautionary cuts by the Fed provides a favorable backdrop of risk assets over the 12-month forward return, both for equities as well as corporate bonds. Therefore, against a backdrop of easing merge policy and resilient growth, we do see an environment remaining favorable for risk assets. While U.S. exceptionalism in equity markets persisted in 2023 and also year-to-date, a weaker dollar, along with the Fed's pivot, could be a tailwind for Asian assets. Better export performance and undemanding valuations add to the region's appeal. As for credits, credit conditions is likely to stabilize and help to limit spread widening. Yields have crept back up, and that makes the current carry on high-quality credits remain attractive. So to summarize, first, the downshift in ISA manufacturing index and real policy rates rising have been helpful to gauge potential shift in Fed's policy. However, unemployment rate and financial conditions are less helpful in mapping out the Fed's policy outlook. Secondly, while real rates have risen to allow the Fed more reasons to consider cuts, the economic momentum is still solid enough to reduce the urgency. Although we argue that unemployment rate may not be that helpful historically as an indicator to project Fed cuts, at 3.7%, full employment still means the Fed can wait. Third and finally, we still see the next Fed cuts to be preemptive rather than reactive, which historically is great for both fixed income and equities. This gives us some confidence that the Fed's pivot this year should allow for a stock bond portfolio to outperform cash in a meaningful way. Now, thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share this with your friends or colleagues and also consider subscribing so you get the latest episode when we release them. If there are topics that you would like to hear from us or any questions on this podcast, please reach out to your JP Morgan Asset Management representative.
for informational purposes only. It is educational in nature and not designed to be taken as advice or a recommendation for any specific investment product, strategy, plan feature, or other purpose in any jurisdiction, nor is it a commitment from J.P. Morgan Asset Management or any of its subsidiaries to participate in any of the transactions mentioned herein. Any examples used are generic, hypothetical, and for illustration purposes only. This material does not contain sufficient information to support an investment decision, and it should not be relied upon by you in evaluating the merits of investing in any securities or products. In addition, users should make an independent assessment of the legal, regulatory, tax, credit, and accounting implications and determine, together with their own financial professional, if any investment mentioned herein is believed to be appropriate to their personal goals Investors should ensure that they obtain all available relevant information before making any investment. Any forecasts, figures, opinions, or investment techniques and strategies set out are for information purposes only based on certain assumptions and current market conditions and are subject to change without prior notice. All information presented herein is considered to be accurate at the time of production, but no warranty of accuracy is given and no liability in respect of any error or omission is accepted. It should be noted that investment involves risks. The value of investments and the income from them may fluctuate in accordance with market conditions and taxation agreements, and investors may not get back the full amount invested. Both past performance and yields are not reliable indicators of current and future results. J.P. Morgan Asset Management is the brand for the asset management business of J.P. Morgan Chase & Company and its affiliates worldwide.